neglected to mention earlier that we have a great sponsor. Our show is brought to you by Coach B's Driving School. Check out their 2010-2011 schedule on their website at coachbsdrivingschool.com or call 425-2614. Joe Veer, the uh, defensive back, Joe Glenn Denning, the tailback for Hillsdale College, joining us tonight. And you start to look at the numbers, Joe Glenn Denning. Uh, you know, you started all six games this year, uh, 900 yards already on the season. Uh, you're averaging over five and a half, almost five and a half yards per carry. And uh, you had a game a couple of weeks ago where you toted the ball 38 times. I've never seen that before at the college level. How exhausted were you after that game? Uh, you know, I was pretty beat up, but I didn't feel like I got 38 until I actually heard that number and then. You know, start hurting a little more, thinking that's how many I got, but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too bad. That's a lot of work, man. And the other thing I noticed about you, it seems like the guys are using you differently than they used Panizzi in that Vinny would play, you know, first, second down or whatever, and then a lot of times he'd come out and either you or Spence or one of the other guys would sub in. Man, Joe, you're not coming out of the game. I mean, <laughs> most of the games this year, you've played the whole thing. Is that just a stamina thing on your part or a different philosophy? How has that come together? Uh, you know, Otter, he said to uh, all the running backs before, he always runs it a million different ways between what he has. And, I don't know, I just like to get in a rhythm, and I don't really think about coming out. So, if they're not going to call me out, I'm going to stay in there. But you had a – gosh, I wish I could remember the game it was, but you had a really long run a few weeks ago. And, you know, almost universally, that tailback's going to come out of that game after that run. It was 40, 50 yards. There you stood in there, didn't miss a play. I mean, the kind of conditioning that it takes to be able to do that, not just to run that distance, but to do all the rest of it that, that a running back has to do. I mean, you guys just have to be in incredible shape to be able to do that. I mean, we've all uh, been on the program all summer and then had a good camp this year, so I feel like we're all in pretty good shape and ready to go when needed. Do you ever need the oxygen bottle when you come off the field? <laughs> it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Joe, uh, I want to talk to you, uh, talking to Joe Veer now, about that Lake Erie game. Okay. Because I believe, I believe, as uh, somebody who uh, watched that game very closely, that we were, we were teetering there a little bit in that game. And uh, Lake Erie kind of was playing with more emotion and that kind of thing. And Otter said the same thing to me in an interview we did a week later. And yet I saw you on the sideline when, when you guys would come off the field kind of exhorting your teammates and the rest of it. And then, boy, did you ever step up with, with a huge game, 16 tackles in that game. Uh, you forced a fumble, pick it up, had the touchdown. We don't win the game without the plays that you made that night. Just talk about that Lake Erie football game. Uh, well, during the week, I mean, we practiced hard. Um, I, I don't think that our team was really prepared for the amount of enthusiasm and mm -hmm. effort that they brought. I mean, I don't think we – we definitely underestimated them there, and they came out with some fire, um, kind of like we did against Grand Valley. Uh, I just don't think they they thought we were going to come out that hard, and they did. And um, I have to give some credit to the, the person that actually caused the fumble that I picked up. That was one of our D linemen, I think Cam Mueller. Um, so – Let's get that straightened out because I know they're, those D-line need some loving too. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, we, we just seemed like we needed somebody to pick up, pick up the team at that point because we weren't expecting that kind of battle and somebody had to do it. And there's no way we were going to lose to Lake Erie at home in our – our house so I had to do something well not only did you have the fumble return for the touchdown but you also had an interception near the goal line in that ball game it just seemed like one winning play after another Joe Veer was making that play and and as a leader on this team uh, one of the juniors now one of the older guys is that a responsibility that you take really seriously just making winning plays on a Saturday uh, absolutely um I think to be an upperclassman you should be making those kind of plays and if you want to be looked at as a leader on the team you can't be letting, you know, balls slip through your hands or having receivers catch balls on you all day. Um, if you want your team to respect you, you got to make plays when time, time, time comes to it. So, you know, um, I take it as my role on the team to try and make those kind of plays whenever possible. And I expect the other seniors on our team and other starters on our team to do the exact same thing. You know, I've got the the tackle list in front of me for your team, 
And the top three tacklers on the Chargers this year are all from that secondary. Uh, Hickson, Henderson, Veer, one, two, and three. Uh, you guys are playing great football. I think in the past it was safe to say that the secondary was maybe a little behind that linebacking core. But this year we've got some young linebackers playing true freshmen on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. This secondary, and, and another guy I don't want to leave out is Ben Caraba, who mm -hmm. stepped in for Galvin when he got hurt. That kid's playing well also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, our defense, we run a lot of cover four, and in our running game, the safeties a lot of times have to come up and mm -hmm. make the fill. So our defense really relies on our secondary's tackling capabilities, and I think that helps us out in the middle and up front. Um, so, I mean, And you've done it. And uh, Henderson, too, coming up from the safety position and making plays. We're talking to Joe Glenn Denning and Joe Veer, a couple of the reasons the Chargers are ranked in the top ten in the country I think this week, number eight in the United States in Division Two, and uh, do you guys even pay attention to the rankings during the season, or do you just are you too focused on the task at hand, getting ready for Michigan Tech? Um, honestly, I haven't really been paying attention. I mean, I knew at one point um, we were ranked 16th, and that was just you know from getting on the D2 network and looking up stuff just for yourself. But um, that's the last I heard. I didn't know we were eighth now, so that's. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I think the only extent we know it to is that means we have a target on our back because yeah, the right. coaches are telling us we're going to get every team's best game every week. So, so Otter doesn't come in with the uh, rankings every Monday and say, "Hey, congratulations, guys! You guys are doing great." <laughs> Not uh, exactly. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> it's not exactly how it goes down. Uh, Joe Veer, another question for you, and then I, I've got a, a, a couple of different things just for our fans. And you have a lot of fans of this team. I mean. Uh, that first game of the season, that place was packed out, and you've had good crowds since then. We had a little cruddy weather a couple of weeks ago, but tremendous fan support from this community. Joe, you were named the Division II Defensive Player of the Week of the entire country uh, for the Division II football NCAA. Uh, and again, I know you've got tunnel vision thinking about the games in front of you and that kind of thing, but do those honors, I mean, does that mean something to you to get that kind of recognition? Um. Yeah, I mean, it does. It's a, a great, you know, accomplishment to get an award like that. But I really, I don't think I've really taken it, you know, to its full potential as, as a lot of people like my dad and my parents have. Um, just because I'm getting focused on the next week. And, right. I mean, it really doesn't mean anything if you get an award like that and don't perform every week to the same capability that you can, you know. And that week, I mean, I was in the right place at the right time a few times and I just capitalize on those opportunities so I hope the rest of our defense can do the same but I think and I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because I watch a ton of football and there are players in the right spot at the right time all the time that are not making that play I yeah. mean it's one thing to be there it's another thing to execute and then finish and that's what you guys have been doing I mean Glenn Denning 13 touchdowns this year that's a dream season and you're only halfway through it I mean you're finding yourself in the end zone a lot that's got to be a blast uh, it is a lot of fun, but we have so many weapons on offense. It really takes the pressure off because we have the guys to get us down into the red zone, and then it's basically just punching it in a lot of times. This offense is a loaded weapon. Uh, with the offensive line that you guys feature, uh, with the receivers and the skill guys that you have, and then, of course, Weatherhead, who is just playing out of his mind. I mean, he had two incomplete passes last week down at – at uh, Ohio Dominican. The guy is locked in like we've never seen. It has got to be incredibly fun to be out there and just have the confidence to know, man, these guys around me are really good. Yeah, it, it is a lot of fun because you know if a team's going to stack the box, then Troy's going to do his thing, and that's what happened last week. It seemed like they played the run pretty well, and then he goes and throws two incompletions in for a ridiculous amount of Yards, so. I want you to be honest with me, Joe, and I, I won't ask you to be honest with me again in this interview. <laughs> when you run for like 50, 60 yards and you realize after you get tackled or score a touchdown that there's a flag and none of that counted, is that frustrating or not? Uh, it's a little bit frustrating. Okay, there we go. <laughs> he admitted it. Good. I can't, you know, as, as a fan of football, and I, a couple of weeks ago that happened to you. You had a 50-yard run that was called back, and I'm like, my gosh. You know, that's got to be pretty frustrating. But, you all know, it's part of the job, right? Yeah, it's part of the job, that's for sure. And the guys who are usually bringing it back, they're the ones that are opening up the rest of the game. So, What's the what's the outlook for this team? I mean, 
I'm asking you again to to look outside of just the 